over the weekend, the, none of these banks are going to be sleeping. They're all going to be going through their portfolios. They're all going to be ready to, to say how they're going to trade on Monday. I, we're, we're in a crisis. This is, this is not a solo thing. I happen to think it's systemic. It's Maybe it's just one bad apple. I don't believe that. And, and, and people should be on top of this. And you guys should be calling emergency hearings to get guys in here. The Federal Reserve, the bank regulators. First How question, why are the, the California... Fed policy? That's because there, yeah. there are multiple tools. A big, that's what he was saying. You don't need to maybe come to you guys, hey, because you They'll just go, go to an existing Fed. Fed. Yes, exactly. Wow, that would... They're, they're the first question I would ask is, why did the California regulators seize the bank hours before the Fed? Why was Janet Yellen, the, the control of the currency, the Federal Reserve, why was the Biden regime not on top of this? Why did they let this thing fester? When, when, Peter, Thiel, when Peter Thiel sits there the other day and goes, take... Peter Thiel is a very conservative guy, and he doesn't have his hair on fire. When he comes out and says, take your money out of the bank, that's a papal bull, okay? Wow. So this He's is, and by the way, the Fed, and, and why did Yellen not move? Why did the Biden regime not move? Because they don't want to, they don't want to show the nation it's their economic policies that brought us to our knees, okay? And that's what you're going to find out. And the question is, is this now what's happened in the bond market? Because the bond market is 20 times bigger than the stock market. Is it actually going to end up crushing the American financial system? And I got to tell you, it's we're going to be in scary times. This is like 2008. Remember, this is the second biggest bank failure in the history of the country. The second biggest bank failure it had 208 billion dollars of assets. This is the only bigger one happened during the financial crisis of 2008. This is the 16th largest bank in the country. And this, this is, gonna, is not a small thing. This is going to hit crypto as well. Because uh, the Silver Lake early in the week. How, the, how much of this is, yeah. is one, one, one of the coins that's being used is, is uh, got 25 percent of its holdings yeah. in SVB. So yes. now people are concerned. Crypto is going to definitely get yep. another hit. Crypto, uh, 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 Bitcoin is under 20,000. So, so how much of this is the, these crazy valuations that a lot of these tech companies have gotten as a result of the Biden Fed? A lot, of, a lot, a lot of the easy money, and, and, and they raise a ton of money, and they put this money in this bank, and now they can't get to it. So it's a necessary correction. Well, okay, so this is the question you guys are going to answer. This is 2008. To, uh, you're looking into the abyss. You don't know how it's going to be. Do you vote trillions of dollars for bailouts? And the bailouts are all on the back of shareholders, um, excuse me, of taxpayers making 40000 bucks a year. Okay? And the elite are going to make out. So you, so, so, you, so you socialized, you've mitigated their downside, right? You, you, you've socialized their losses. And you let them have upside. They have unlimited upside, but they have limited downside because the sh because the the taxpayers are going to bail it out. And that's the question that's going to come back to this Congress. And this is the big fight we had in 2009. And people kind of said, okay, okay, okay. And we ended up doing it. And we never got to the problem. We have still so many zombie financial companies, the too big to fail uh, situation with the banks and the financial system. We never got to the bottom of it. We never landed the ball and let the pus come out. Because guess what? That's a brutal, tough process. If the right? ruling class does that again, people are coming with a picture. I well, mean, I the, the, by the way, the pressure is going to, by the way, the first line of defense is you guys, because the big debates are going to, remember, they they, it's a certain how, how fast will Schumer pass this to put pressure on the House, do you think? I think it's going to be big. Remember, in 2008, let's just go back, when Lehman collapsed because they got tired of moral hazard, uh, what they didn't th think about is that the commercial paper market, which is the way all the companies all the money get their cash in the cafeterias and the, the pay everybody, it was the center. The commercial paper market collapsed, so the whole system froze. By Thursday, they went to see Bush, and they said, this is uh, Paulson and, and Bernanke, and they said, we need a trillion dollars by 5 o'clock, or the American financial system will collapse in 48 hours, and the world financial system will collapse in 72 hours, and have a global internet. Something the Nazis couldn't do, the, the military junta in Japan couldn't do. Our greatest enemies couldn't do this to us. We did it to ourselves. And Bush said, I don't have the authority to do that. You have to go up to the House. The only person that has the ability to do that is the Speaker of the House, and the House has to vote this, right? They're the only people that can actually commit money. And so that's where this whole process started, and that's where all those huge debates on the floor with Louis Gomer and, and five libertarians sitting there going, no, it's called capitalism. Let it rip, right? And they were overwhelmingly, everybody said, okay, that's great. Theoretically, we can't do that because there may not be a bottom of this. You guys are going to be faced with the same thing over the next couple of weeks. And local governments and state governments who are heavily utilizing the bond market will be the, right behind the neo Robini, Robini said, we have, because of the zero interest rates we went to, right now in the world, there's $300 trillion of debt. That debt, personal level, 
county level, the school board level, the water level, the, the, the local government, city, state, federal government, of everywhere is $300 trillion. All basically predicated on an interest rate structure that's close to zero. Now that interest rate structure is at 4% for 10 year, the 10 year bond and 5% for two. Remember, the night the election was stolen from Donald Trump, on, uh, and the evening of 3 hey, November 2020. Well, Steve Bannon's completely wrong about that, but continue. <laughs> on 3 November 2020, when Fox called Arizona for, for Joe Biden, the 10-year Treasury was 0.86%. The 10-year Treasury today is 4%, right? That's a massive increase. And by the way, people under 30, the millennial generation, has $9 trillion of debt. You guys are nothing, you know what I've said for years, nothing but Russian serfs. You're adding debt at a faster pace than any other generation in our history, and you're not going to be able to pay. You're like a hamster on a wheel with what? a little bit of credit. So what, what this, is only gonna get, this is only going to get worse, dramatically worse. So what does that mean for us other than, I mean, the economy gets bad? Yeah, the economy gets bad, but then you start having bankruptcies. What you're going to start to have is not the inability to pay. Well, right now, the debt ceiling. Yeah. We're essentially yes, a bankrupt sir. nation. Okay, we have this thing called the Federal Reserve that continues to print money, and it can continue to print money because the, the biggest export we have in the world is the dollar. Yep. Every transaction, and this is why what the CCP announced today with Iran and Saudi Arabia is so big, because they're doing 40-year output. As, as the Green New Deal comes here, and we're trying to get to a net carbon zero, that Saudi Arabia and Iran are getting more important to China, the CCP, who just burn anything. And they're doing long-term output deals for all their production, 40-year deals, and they're going to use the yuan, the Chinese currency, and take it directly and bear the risk that that comes, not convert it into petrodollars. Once we are not the reserve currency, which Great Britain was up until World War II, we took over at Bretton Woods after the war because we were the superpower. Once that is not our top export, not, once every, whether it's a drug deal or, or, or converting something to put into a, a church in France in the... In the uh, in the collection plate. Once it does, we're not the prime reserve currency. We're Argentina. Well, thank we're goodness Argentina. the cartels still operate in the U.S. <laughs> no, exactly. I mean, I mean, you know, with, with the They're Saudis moving to the right. lawn, I mean, we really need the cartels. So, 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 so and what, where this is headed right now, their debate, this, their, their debate, look, Biden just put in your face a $6.8 trillion budget that has no cuts anywhere, basically 6% growth, not if one cut, in, and so he's not prepared to meet anybody halfway, and you have a debt ceiling right now, that we see from the Congressional Budget Office, at minimum will add $19 trillion in 10 years. That means we'll have $50 trillion of debt. You understand, we're gonna have growth. It's gonna kill growth under 2%. You're gonna have loss, a lost generation or two in this country with under 2% growth, uh, overbearing debt, so much money to go to pay off the debt, no opportunity, no venture capital, no ability to grow the economy, everybody li uh, living like a Russian sir. That well, is the thing. Thank but, goodness the Zoomers are mentally healthy enough for this. Well, but hold they've on. They've developed so, a resiliency. They've shed frailty. But that, that, that's, that's, that's what I'm thinking. Stop, I'm, I'm stop not painting sure. such a rosy picture. I'm, I'm not sure I, uh, I'm, I'm all that worried if that's the worst case scenario. I think one thing my generation and the younger generation need is to learn how to roll up their sleeves, chop some wood, and raise some chickens. One of the problems that we've had with millennials and Gen Z is They've, they've been born into a world with, with silver spoons up their asses. Everything. You, I mean, they, they want for nothing. You, uh, the story I tell is, uh, the first day I walk into Vice Media with my job, I was shocked to find that people didn't even show up and were getting 30 to 60K, depending on what your writing job was. And well, I come People from, don't show up here and they get 172 k well, well, absolutely. But I'm, I'm in New York City, and I'm thinking to myself, some of these people are getting 50, some of these people are getting 100K, and they don't even show up. And I come from a world where I was loading bags and airplanes for 10 bucks an hour, and people are getting injured, they're getting, they're getting uh, uh, repetition injuries. If, I, I said if the people, the working class of this country found out what life was like for the, for the uh, laptop class, there'd be a revolution overnight. The, the idea that someone's getting 40, 50 bucks an hour to think about how they, they can write another Trump. article about how racist Trump is, and meanwhile some other person is breaking their back lifting steel beams for 20, 30 bucks an hour, they're going to be like, are you kidding me? They, they, this, this can't be that way. So this generation, they need to learn how to chop some wood. Where these guys are going to come under the pressure, not just the bailout of, of SBV and stop the contagion, but then you get right into the spending, into the debt ceiling. And you're, you're going to get, um, the emotions of this are going to be huge. Because they're saying you're going to throw kids well, out that's the street. You're gonna get, this, this is going to be the battle of the ages on finance in this country. What happens right now with the debt ceiling? You get me excited. Future.
Well, no, you got to draw the line. If you, if you give them an inch, and I mean an inch, because right now you, you, you don't have to, uh, you don't have to uh, do anything to any government security. You got enough cash oh, coming God. in to pay the interest and pay the face amount of the debt. You'll never default. So all has to be done by the Secretary of Let Treasury. But these guys are going to be guilt tripped every day. The media is going to be. Let me, it's, it's going to be a government shutdown to the hundredth power. I, I, I got to ask you. I mean, this story is really breaking on a Friday, right? Yes. Th th this, that says to me they knew it was coming well in advance, and it was planned for this day because this is the day where everyone's off partying and not paying attention. That's Friday's where news goes to die. So it sounds like they knew this was coming and they wanted to. Well, they definitely didn't want. Like the they, they, they definitely. Yeah, they no, wait, let's share, say this: the, 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 the California regulators for a, ca a bank, re a state regulator, to step in front of the Fed and something like this and federal oh, yeah. authorities is unheard of on a bank that's not some local community bank. So what's the Newsom bank. pivot? How, how Newsom, I think, is in, in real trouble on this. Because I think Newsom, this is going to hit to this thing, but I think Newsom's going to step in and start to, he's going to come back and make the big play that you got to bail this out. This is the future of the he country. He comes to Washington 100%, to demand the bailout. 100%. Gavin Newsom will come and say, this California model is actually the model for the country. Yep. It's high tech. We're the leader in the world. If you don't do this, we're going to be a decade behind the CCP. These are a thousand of the best. Look at all. It's, it's Andrew Yang. California is a donor yeah. state. 100%. Donor, if you have donor state on your bingo card, this will be his. This will be his. There's it, a pretty it, powerful it, counter it, argument. It, Everything it, 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 turns to shit. I that's got what, that's it. That's when DeSantis <laughs> went to Iowa, Newsom yeah, will here. come to Washington D.C. to make his case as a national figure. He's there to save the high tech economy, and you got to do it and by, by doing a bailout. And house. these liberals will just march in lockstep. They'll repeat whatever they hear on the TV. What did Yang just say? That's what they exactly. Say. The that's contagion. That, that, that's contagion. already that's already the narrative. They got it on Friday. Hey, they're not taking Friday night off. They're hammering this nonstop. When I left, they're hammering, and they're not, nobody's talking about how did this happen? How did we actually get here? Right? How did we actually get here? So, so I want to ask you, Steve. So yeah. you just said a minute ago, or a few minutes ago, that the world's three hundred trillion. You don't need debt. to get too close. It's okay. very sensitive. Yeah. Who are we in debt to? First off, we're in debt to the Chinese that own a. First off, we have 32 trillion on on the balance sheet of the Treasury. We have another nine trillion at the at the uh, Fed. The Japanese insurance companies own it. The um, the um, 